Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. We're going to take another look at gear ratios today, but we're going to look at something a little different than we did in our last gear ratio video. In our last video, we looked at a simple gear where we had two gears directly connected. This makes it real easy to understand how gear ratios work because you only have these two to work with. So that's going to be a little different than what we've got here. In this system, what we've got is a compound gear system. We have two 84 tooth gears here, but they're on opposite sides of our system. They're not directly connected. So you may be asking yourself, how do we get these two to be connected in a gear system if they're on opposite sides of the object? And the magic is what's going on on the inside. So let's rotate this. Now, if I move this a little bit closer so you can see, we have a lot going on here. We have an 84 tooth gear on either side, and then we have a bunch of gears on the inside. We actually only have one, two, three, four drive shafts here, but we have eight total gears in the system. In the inside, we have 12 and 36 tooth gears stacked next to each other through the entire system. And that's where we get the magic for a compound system. This 84 tooth is directly connected to that 12 tooth. And since the axles are square and the hole on the gear is square, as we can see there, that means that these two move at a one to one gear ratio. One turn here results in one turn there. In fact, we can kind of see that if you were to slow it down. Let's, let's look, actually, if we look right here at the set screw on the locking collar, and if I rotate once, you can see it only came around once, okay? So one to one here. But when we come down to there, we're on a different drive shaft. So there's actually going to be a, a gear ratio other than one to one at this point. So if we have a 36 tooth here and a 12 tooth here, and this is my input, 36 divided by 12 equals 3 to 1. That means three rotations of my input to get one rotation out of my output. And since this is 3 to 1, these are the same, so each one of these is an individual 3 to 1 gear ratio. In a compound gear system, we take those ratios and multiply them. So 3 to 1 times 3 to 1 means 9 to 1 between here and here. So 9 rotations here to get one turn out of that gear. We multiply again by 3 to get 27 down there. So one turn here, 27 turns here to get one turn out of this gear. Since this is connected to the other 84 tooth, they're at a one-to-one -one ratio. So, 27 turns here to get one turn out of this gear. We can kind of see that if we look here. So let's, let's rotate so that this is straight up, or this is as close to straight up as we can get. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to try and rotate that back around a bit. And there's a little bit of wiggle, so we're going to do the best we can. And what I want to do is I want to see how many times it takes to get that to go around once. And if you really wanted to, you can slow this down, and you'd be able to watch my hand here so you can follow along and count. So let's do this. So I'm just going to keep turning this. And if you were to slow this down and count how many times it takes, you will see my hand turning a lot. You should be able to count 27 rotations of my hand in order to get this all the way around. Now, why might we need to do this? Well, considering our gear ratio, I'm putting in very little torque here. This is really, really, really easy to turn. But I'm also not getting much speed out of that. Okay, So I'm moving this one fast and that one's moving slow. And if this is slower, that means the torque is drastically increased. This setup would be great if you need a lot of force at the output. Let's say you're building a device where there's a lot of weight involved or this needs to lift something heavy. 
Well, you want the torque on the outside, uh, the end or the output, because it'll make that lifting much easier. So um, when doing this, we would might attach a motor here so that we don't tire out. And this moves really fast, but we get a lot of torque there. But I can also flip this around. Now, if I want this one to move, here's my output, here's my input. And this might be a bit easier to see when I rotate there. Notice I'm having to grip it like this. I found that when using the handle, this becomes really hard to turn. Um, so sometimes I find myself doing it this way, but we'll use the handle just because um, it's a little smoother forward to do. Now I'm going to turn this one time. I'm going to turn this gear here one rotation, and you can see how many times this spins around. So one rotation. Let's get this set up. Actually, I'm going to do this this way here. That went past it a little bit. Okay, so let's do that again. That's one rotation, and we can see that that thing went very far. Okay, so this is great if you want to get a lot of speed out of the system, but we're getting a lot of speed here at the output, which means the speed here is much slower. And since the speed here is slower, I have to put a lot more torque into turning this, and I get very little torque at the output. So that makes this one much harder to turn than that one. And that's an important aspect of the gear ratios. So when you want to do a compound gear ratio, you have to think very carefully. If you're going to gear this for speed, you are going to want something to help you turn this one because it's going to be harder and harder to turn the greater that gear ratio is. You also probably want to use some more reinforced equipment instead of some of this plastic that we've got. Um, I've got some gears that are thicker. They're a little bit more higher strength gears. So this is a compound gear system, which means we have a compound gear ratio. The compound gear ratio is calculated by taking each individual gear ratio and multiplying to find out the final gear ratio. If this is my input, I have a 27 to 1 gear ratio. 27 turns here, 1 turn here. If I flip this around, and here is my input. I have a 1 to 27 gear ratio. So one turn here gets 27 turns there. And in both of these systems, um, what you are going to use them for depends on do you want more speed or do you want more torque out of the system. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with any of our other gear examinations or any other tutorials posted here at MythBadger Videos.